Hello everybody, Sean Colgan here with Training and Safety. Today we're going to be going over the Mini Striker Pump. A couple things we want to make sure that we look over before we even put this into service is uh, make sure number one that we have oil and we have the proper level of oil in this machine because if you don't this machine will actually stall out. It will not run. It's a safety feature um, put into this uh, unit and it'll just completely shut off. So check your oils, okay? Also, this is a four stroke um, little engine. So that means that we do not use mixed fuel in it. We do not use mixed fuel. This is just regular straight fuel. So pretty basic, everybody. Like I said, this is a review. Uh, we have on and off. Right here, we have the throttle. Over here, we have the fuel on and off. This is in the on mode. You can see the arrow right over here. This is your choke. This is gonna be choke on, this is gonna be choke off, okay? Also, this is the pump portion of it. There is things we wanna make sure we look at, very important things to make sure this works properly. Um, on the uh, uh, adapters for the pump, on your intake and on your discharge side, these do have gaskets inside here in between the coupling and the actual volute of the pump itself. So you wanna make sure you look inside here and make sure that they're not poking through and make sure that it's seated properly. Because as we all know, air is not our friend coming into this pump. You will not be able to get the, um, the performance you want out of this uh, unit. So definitely make sure you check it. Make sure your caps are on when it's stored. Uh, make sure the threads all look good in your bag of goodies. You're gonna have the actual uh, priming pump that comes with it. Make sure that this doesn't just get thrown in the compartment um, or else this could be a real bummer for all of us that are out there uh, trying to get this unit to perform. So make sure that the gasket itself is in here. Make sure that it is tightened down, the actual primer, and uh, make sure it's stored in a proper uh, position. And yes, this is something that we should be exercising to make sure it works before we're out on a 20-day assignment. Also, with the foot valve itself, we want to make sure that you do exercise it every once in a while because the, um, the actual valve itself can stick itself down to the uh, housing, which would not allow the Venturi effect to work for you, will not allow it to prime, will not allow it to work properly. So yes, we want to make sure we look at the screen, make sure there's no damage, make sure there's no bigger holes that could come into the pump itself and damage it. We ask these things to do a lot, and they do sit out there full throttle at times and scream and work for hours, okay? And they will do it if you properly take care of it. Make sure you have the gasket inside uh, the intake, the foot valve itself. We, we also use a Y, um, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Make sure that the Y properly works, all your valves. Make sure it doesn't leak. You don't want to have a leaky mess next to you when you're operating uh, the unit. Also, we have the hard suction, which is obviously what's going to go from our water source into the unit itself. With the foot valve off on your hard intake hose, you can pretty much set it down into your water source. Fill the hose up by just pushing all the hose underneath water, all the air will evacuate. Put your foot valve on it, slowly bring the hose out, put on the gated Y. You're gonna hook the plunger for the primer. You're gonna hook the hose into your intake side of your pump. And we're gonna go ahead I got sufficient water coming up. Now let's go ahead and give it a try here. So with the Y itself, there's a reason, obviously, why we have this on here. It's uh, number one, so that when we're opening and closing valves, we can actually do that and have a little more control other than just having an open discharge, just like we would be if we were drafting. Everything is opening and closing slowly so we don't lose that prime. So that's why we put the Y. The other reason is 
is when we are supplying rigs and um, we're just waiting and we don't want to lose a prime we ha and we don't want to be deadheading the pump so we don't want to be heating that up, we have the recirculating line like you would on a normal drafting operation itself. So those are the couple things to keep in mind and how you're setting it up, which way the hose is going so that it doesn't make a muddy mess for you, okay? That's why we have the inch and a half going back into our water source and that's why we have this inch and a half supplying the rig. Before we uh, disassemble the unit, we want to make sure we run the fuel out of it. So we're going to go ahead and shut the fuel and the reason why we don't want to disconnect it is because we don't want this thing running for that long a period of time with no water going into this pump. It'll heat up really quick and then we're going to wear out the actual impeller and some of the other unit itself or some other components of the unit itself. So fuel is off, we're on. This is why we want water circulating through the system. This could take a minute or so, so be patient. Okay, obviously we don't want to store it back in the unit with it hot, so give it a little bit of time to cool itself off. It's going to take a little bit of time to disassemble it. Uh, for long-term storage, um, nowadays I think fire season's year-round, but for long-term storage, let's make sure that we empty out the tank itself, okay? Because as we know, with any power equipment, if it's sat for any amount of time, the type of fuel we have nowadays plugs all the jets up. Thank you for uh, taking the time to watch this video and hopefully this will get us all prepared uh, for the next and upcoming tag and for the wildland fire season.